Hey guys, today's from the Install Bay. It's one of the most popular questions you guys ask us. That is? Backup cameras. That's right, stay tuned. So for this, we have the Echo Master CAM-LP1N. And we picked this one for a very specific reason. It has a very common wiring harness that it comes with. That's this guy right here. It has a RCN one end with a red wire. And then on the other end, it has some form of plug that it will plug into the camera, a power and ground, and then an output to the front. Now there's variations of this, but at the end of the day, what you're looking at is a power and ground at one end and something that goes up front with a pigtail like this on the other. Sometimes it's just a set of RCAs where it's yellow on this end, they look the both on same ends. Sometimes they have two here where they have this. Either way, this configuration is what we're talking about today. And how they explain hooking them up in the instructions is they want you to connect this wire to ground and then this wire to the reverse trigger. And then the reverse is going to power up the camera and then come up front and trigger the radio's reverse wire. That's fine if you don't want to use the feature that most new radios come with, which is the ability to go into the menu system and make the camera active when not in reverse. How do we make this work the way the radio manufacturer wants it to work so that we can do that? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Think of it like this, that there's two things going on here. One is the backup camera, and it's a self-contained system, meaning that disregard whatever it is you're reading or they're telling you, and that all you're trying to do is power up this camera and make it work. And two, you're trying to trigger this radio's reverse feature so that when you put the car in reverse, it automatically switches. That's what you have to be thinking here. Not that this is all one big ecosystem that's going to talk to one another. To make that function, what we need to do is for one, get rid of this power feed back here in the back. We're not gonna be using the reverse lights to power up the camera, because if we do that, the camera is only gonna come on when the car is in reverse, which means you can't use that cool function built into here. Now, this red wire here is a loop of this red wire here, meaning it's all one wire that passes through this black cable and comes out right here. So to demonstrate that, I'm gonna connect this to a continuity tester. This is a continuity tester. Front red wire, rear red wire. And the reason why it's like that is, like I said, they want you to hook this up through the reverse lights. It's gonna power the camera and send a positive up front to trigger this radio. We don't want that. So the first thing we wanna do is come back here, cut this wire short, and go ahead and cap it off. Now the reason why we want to cap it off is because this is the power wire for the camera. This does go all in here and also comes out the end of this, which is what the camera will plug into. It's just a big Y, okay? So it comes in here, goes this way, comes and goes this way. We want to make sure we cap this off because we're going to be feeding this with accessory. If this was just banging around in the back, touches metal, it's going to short out. Now what we want to do is power this thing up and take a look at it. All cameras essentially have three wires. They have the main RCA, they have a positive power wire, and they have a negative power wire. So for this, we'll go ahead and hook up our test bench positive and our test bench negative. And as we can see here, we have camera. This is this guy right here. The camera is functioning without this red wire hooked up to anything, which is what we're trying to demonstrate here. We want this camera to be its own entity and not connected to the reverse lights in any way, shape, or form. It's its own thing, it's its own device. It needs to work all by itself. And it needs to do that so that we can utilize this feature. Because the radio is going to do two things. It's going to switch over to the camera when it's in reverse, and also allow you to switch to the menu and see the camera when it's not in reverse. Now, a couple things about this camera in specific, since we're using this one for this demo, and you might want to know more about this camera. What it's designed to do is mount under a license plate so you could have a license plate frame with this slide this on and then this camera will attach here with two screws and kind of stick out like this that way you can have your custom license plate and a backup camera and not get in the way of everything on the camera harness itself it has a loop and this loop is if you do not want the parking lines this one has parking lines built into it
into it. So if you don't want them, you can go ahead and cut this loop and they'll go away. So if you're doing this with a radio that has adjustable backup lines, go ahead and cut this and that'll disable the parking lines on this. That way you won't have two. On the harness itself, it has two options, mirror and normal. That way you can use this for a front facing camera if you'd like and control it from here. Some radios, such as the AVH X series Pioneers, that will take a front facing camera, don't allow you to go into the menu and switch the image over. So in the box, you get an option flat bracket. This one will allow you to mount it as a front facing camera. You can mount it just like this or like that. So you have different options for mounting. It comes with a piece of heat shrink. The reason why is once you're done, you wanna go ahead and slide this over here and heat shrink it up so that no water will get inside of this. It also comes with two screws, as well as two mounting screws. And of course you also get the warranty card and a user manual. And it also comes with a breakdown of what each one of the pins do. So now we understand how this is gonna work. The next step is the reverse trigger, meaning the wire that is going to tell this radio to go to reverse. To do that, we need to go over to the car. Now every car has reverse lights. This car just happens to have reverse lights mounted right here. Sometimes they're up here in the door. It really just depends on the vehicle you're using. When trying to find the reverse wire, sometimes the easiest thing to do is to just tap at the light. After all, you're already back here and you're going to be running the wires from the back of the car to the front of the car. You're going to be passing by those wires as you go. So it makes sense to tap into them there. What you're going to want to do is get yourself some 18 gauge wire. If you're a stereo guy, remote turn on wire will work fine. You just want to find yourself something thin. It doesn't have to be you know, it's 18 gauge. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna run a wire from your light to behind the radio. If you're savvy and you know where there's another spot to get it, which is not gonna be in the fuse box. So don't even think that there's gonna be a fuse in the fuse box for you to tap to get the reverse lights. Put that out of your head. But sometimes you can find it in the kick panel. If you know what, what, if you know what color the wire is in the back, you might be able to find it up here, in which case you won't need a long run of wire. Did you find it up there, Fernando? I found it right here. Let's take a look at what Fernando found. So in this Santa Fe up here in the body control module there just happens to be a blue wire that is the reverse wire and we were going to go ahead and solder into it now the question is is how do we know that that's reverse wire for that you're going to need one of two things either a digital multimeter or a test light all right so what we want to do is we want to put the positive test lead on the wire the negative test lead on the ground and then we're going to put the car in reverse we're going to see something like this anywhere between 9 to 12 volts. When we put the car back in drive or park, it's going to go away. Now the reason why we want to test for positive, because most reverse systems are a positive. The key is whether you get it there by Fernando or back here at the light, it doesn't matter, it's all going to do the same thing. Just you're not going to be using it to power the camera. Now that he's done that, he's going to run that over to the radio. A couple things about different manufacturers as far as radios goes. If you get a Pioneer radio or a Kenwood radio, probably even a JVC radio, they use a purple white wire. Alpine likes to use an orange white wire and these are gonna be the reverse triggers on the radio. You also have to go into the menu system and tell it that you're using it. It isn't automatically gonna be on for you to use in some of the cases. Some manufacturers have it on, some manufacturers have it off. Pioneer typically has it off. You have to go into the menu and turn it on. Kenwood, when you start up the radio, it's an option. So as you're setting up the radio before you hit finish, it asks you, are you gonna be adding a backup camera? Alpine, you go into the menu and turn it on. Don't just assume that if you hook up the wire, it's gonna work. We're gonna go ahead and start showing you how to wire up the harness. So whether you already have the radio installed in the car, or you're like us now, adding a new radio, a couple basic things you have to do for wiring to prep the harness. The harness is gonna have the reverse wire on it if you're doing something like a Pioneer or an Alpine. If you're doing a Kenwood, the reverse wire is gonna be on the back of the radio. Most of the time, they're pretty short, except for in the case of the Alpine, but they're about four inches long. We like to lengthen them out, so we're gonna go ahead and add some of the wire that we're running to the harness. Now, what we wanna do also is go in and find our accessory wire. The accessory wire is gonna be the red wire here in the harness. If you're adding in a new radio like this, you can just simply add in a pigtail like this to it, or if you already have the harness made up, go ahead and strip the wire back like this, exposing the copper, and add in a pigtail just like this. 
The reason why we like to add these pigtails is that it allows us to make it a little bit more convenient instead of trying to bundle in all the wire into one specific harness. Now we're going to go ahead and cover it with a piece of Tessa tape to insulate it. Now at this point what we've done is we've gone ahead and added in a length for our reverse camera trigger as well as the accessory power. Now for us we're just going to go ahead and pretty up this harness. For that we're going to go ahead and use more Tessa tape. Tessa tape is a felt style tape that is very similar to the style tape that the manufacturers use. So it gives it a very factory look and feel when in the dash. If you don't care for that, just go ahead and use some zip ties to make sure the wire is nice and bundled up good. You don't want to leave the wires loose in the dash. Now we like to make sure that our harnesses are serviceable, meaning that we can take them out. So what we're going to go ahead now and do is add some bullet style connectors. This will allow us to make a permanent but yet removable style. And what you have here is you have a male and a female and the two of them click together. Now on the harness we want to make sure we use a male for the reverse and a female for the power. And the reason why is this is going to be live going back, so we don't want something like this in the dash that can touch and cause a short. It's going to be live coming from the reverse into this, so we want to make sure that's not live. So that's why we use the two different ends in different directions. All right, so now our harness is ready. All we have to do now is run the wire through the car. So when we're running our reverse wire, we go ahead and use a product called Loom. Loom is this plastic sheeting here. Because this is a hot wire, it'll go ahead and protect it when it's running through the car. You can just, of course, use more of the Tessa tape if you'd like. But it's to mimic like the factory, how it has this, this felt product here. This is just a plastic version of it. Now, as we crimped it together, if we need to, we can go ahead and pull it apart and then plug it back in. All right, so we've got the wire inside the car. We've gone ahead and drilled a hole here to run this end through. Now you wanna make sure you keep this connection point somewhere located near the camera. Even though it comes with about six feet of wire, go ahead and keep it in the rear because you need this to be serviceable. In case the camera goes bad, you don't want this guy all the way located here inside the car because then you'll have to pull all this out. Mm. Now up here is a factory ground point, so we're gonna go ahead and ground our camera here and then we're going to zip tie up the camera all along here, removing this panel, up and through here, removing this panel, and then bring it through this grommet. Now running the wire through the rubber boot can be a bit of a challenge, especially with this style that has this big RCA on it. It will go through, but it's not gonna be easy. What we like to use to get our way through it is this guy right here. All this is is a very long zip tie. It makes a really nice fish. Now, a lot of the times these rubber grommets will have little arms or legs that are tied into the main harness that you need to get out so that you can get to moving this freely because this needs to move from the harness freely. Now, what you want to do is once you've got that is go ahead and feed your fish through compressing this as you do it until the end points out. And try to keep it on the outside of it. Don't try to go through wires. You want to be careful when you're sticking the fish through because sometimes the fish can get intertwined inside of wires, which will make it harder to get this through. Now for this, you just want to use some regular old vinyl tape. Tape your wire to the zip tie and make sure you tape it about six inches. You wanna make sure you have a good grip on this. Go ahead and feed the red wire up into it. Now to make it slippery, go ahead and take yourself some soap, just some regular hand soap. Go ahead and put it all over the tape, all over the zip tie. Stick your finger in the hole, lube it up nice, get it nice and juicy. All right, go ahead. And there you go, pulls right through. If you go ahead and just run your soapy hand over it as you're pulling it through. You don't need a lot of soap, a little goes a long way. 
Now when you're done with it, just go ahead and clean off any of the soap that may have gotten onto the tip of the RCA. And of course, just remove your tape. Now you can go ahead and zip tie up your wire so that it isn't drooping. You really wanna wait and do that last so that you know how much wire you ran through the door so that you can make it you know, nice and secure. Now, just like the wire ran in the car, we're gonna go ahead and put some loom over it. Now, loom can be very sharp, so you don't wanna just rub it over the naked wire. What I recommend doing is taking yourself a piece of tape and just wrap it around a portion of the wire like this. And you can use that as your split point. And just go ahead and feed your wire, just like that. Now just go ahead and make sure you put your grommet back in and get it together. Make sure that it's seated firmly the way it was from the factory. Otherwise, it'll leak and you don't want that to happen for sure. The other thing too is make sure when you're running the wire, we noticed we took, you noticed we took this off. You want to make sure that when you're doing it that it's on the right side of that. You don't want to have to pull it back apart because you ran it on the wrong side of the wire. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is snake the wire through the car, along the roof line, and down the A-pillar. Make sure you keep your hands clean too while you're doing this because you're touching a headliner, so be careful with that. The other thing too is to keep in mind, when you're running along the ceiling like that, make sure you stay on the opposite side of the airbag. If it has a curtain side airbag, you wanna make sure you stay away from that so that as it deploys, it doesn't get wrapped up into the camera wire. That would be bad. So just be careful when you're doing that. Make sure you tuck it either on one side or the other and don't cross it at any point. This car doesn't have that, so we're not having to worry about it. Now once you get it over to the A-pillar, go ahead and zip tie it in place so that you don't hear it rattling around in your overhead. All right, so we went ahead and connected our red wire up so there again, like I said, we can remove it, plug it back in. The camera has accessory. On a Pioneer, it is the brown RCA input. There's a brown here. You wanna make sure you plug into that. Most other manufacturers, it is a yellow and it'll typically say cam or something like that. So make sure you plug it into the right input. We'll go ahead and get the rest of our wires plugged into this guy and then we'll secure it in the dash. Now at this point is a good time to go ahead and test the reverse to see if it works. So we'll go ahead, turn the car on, go into our settings. This place is called camera. We'll go ahead and switch it on, hit X, put it in reverse. And there you go, we have the backup image. Now you saw that black image that just came on. If you only get that and are not getting the camera, it's one of two things. Either A, you didn't connect the power to the camera, or B, you put the RCA in the wrong input. Now we can go ahead and go into the menu, come up here to camera view, and there we go, we have the camera view. So as we see, it allows you to keep your beauty ring, backup camera goes right here. You can adjust it by turning it down and then tightening the screw. All right, so one final check, we'll go ahead and put it in reverse. Put it out of reverse, we'll go into the menu, we'll select camera view, and now we can see the camera. Now on the Pioneer, you have two options, here and here. If you select here, it'll allow you to keep viewing this. If you select here, it'll go ahead and close it. All right guys, that's it. A lot of fun there. So if you have questions about a backup camera, we hope this answered a whole bunch of them, a lot. Fernando. So thank you for watching. You guys can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, also in Twitter. And if you'd like to talk to us personally, you can check us out on our Facebook Live. We do it every Monday night, 6.30 Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. Also, if you'd like to get any of the cool tools that we used in this video, check out Dean and Fernando's tool drawer at dnftooldrawer.com. Thank you guys. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Wait. Bye. All right, guys, we'll see you later next time. Bye.